Good morning. So we are on day 19 of module one in Written Wisdom. We are still working on the book, Why Do Leaves Change Color? And today we're going to be doing a question set and you're going to be working on your writing task a little bit more today. So we're going to go ahead and get started with our video lesson with Miss Sabella. Welcome back, friends. I'm Sue Sabella, your Great Minds teacher, and I'm so excited to continue to learn and grow with you. Let's see what we need for today. Today you'll need handout 23A, the word link up, assessment 23, the focusing question task, your journal, scissors, and a pencil. Okay, so we are not going to need the scissors. We are not going to need the handout 23A. And you will have a digital copy already uploaded for you today for assessment 23. So the only thing that you need right now is your journal and your pencil. Pause here to gather what you need and then just hit play when you're ready to continue. Words can teach us so much about the world and they are really fun to play with. What is the important message in this text? Today we'll be using key terms or important words in this text to help us think about the message in Why Do Leaves Change Color? Pause the video here to grab handout 23A and then hit play so we can review the words on the sheet together. Okay, so remember we do not have this. We are just going to watch and pay attention to Miss Sabella. Before we read the directions, I'd like to read the words that are on the handout below. Chlorophyll, water, leaves, pigments, change, sunlight, temperature, separate or separate, green, yellow, orange, absorb. Now let's take a look at the directions. The directions say to cut apart the word cards. So you'll cut on the dotted line. The other thing that I want to remind you is we will need more labels than just the two blank cards that you'll cut out. So if you notice all of the white space under the two blank cards, you can cut two more rows of cards right there. And that way you should have enough labels. Pause the video here to cut out the word cards and also the blank labels. Just hit play when you're ready to continue. After you cut up your cards, you should have two piles. You'll have a pile of cards with words on them but also be sure that you have some cards that don't have anything written on them yet. And if you need extra, it's okay to use scrap paper and to cut those up too or to tear them up and use them for your labels as we think about how these words are connected or related to each other. I put my blank cards or labels over to the side with my pen so I could spread all the words out. You can do that too. Use the table or use the floor and spread all your words out. Take a look at those words. I want you to start thinking about how are some of the words connected? You might decide there are two words that have something in common, some way that they're connected. You may find that you have three or four words that are connected. Let's try some together before you try some on your own. I linked leaves with green and they're connected or related because leaves are green in the spring and summer. So on my blank piece of paper, on my label, 
I labeled my group. Leaves in green are linked because leaves are green in the spring and summer. I could have just stopped at leaves in green, but I learned so much more by reading Why Do Leaves Change Color? I learned about chlorophyll. And I learned that leaves are green because of chlorophyll. So I added that to my group. I expanded on my thinking. Let's try one more together. I also linked the words yellow and orange and I made a label for this group, colors of leaves in the fall. Because we read in Why Do Leaves Change Color? That leaves change color in the fall and some of those colors are yellow and some are orange. But I know even more now about colors in the leaves because I read Why Do Leaves Change Color? We learned about pigments. So I took away my label and I'm actually using the word pigments as my label for this group because yellow and orange are pigments that are inside the leaf. They appear when the chlorophyll fades. I remember that from my book. And if I wanted to check my thinking, I could also dive back into my book just to make sure. So I might do that right now. While I'm looking at the book, I want you to start making your groups and your labels. You're going to pause here to work and to think and to share your groups with your learning partner if you can. And then just hit play when you're ready to continue our lesson. Okay, so what you were going to do today is in your journal on page 34, you are going to choose between these, let me go back to the page that Miss. okay. Read the focusing question to you. So here are all the, the words. Okay, so what you're going to do is you're going to do what Miss Sabella just did. She chose three words. She chose green, she chose leaves, and she chose chlorophyll. And then she took those three words and she connected them by saying that leaves are green in the summer because of chlorophyll. And then she did another one. She did yellow, orange, and pigment. And we could say that yellow and orange are natural pigments in the leaves, okay? So you're gonna do two different ones today. And I mean, yours are gonna be different, okay? You could do water and sunlight and leaves. You could say that leaves need water and sunlight. Or you could say separate leaves and temperature. You could say when the temperature is cooler, the leaves begin to separate from the trees. So you're going to pick two to three words and make two different connections on page 34. Two different connections. Okay. You're going to write a sentence and show me how they are connected. Okay. So here's what I've got so far. I've got leaves green chlorophyll and leaves are green in the summer because of chlorophyll. My next one is yellow orange pigments. So I'm going to say yellow and orange are natural pigments. in leaves. Okay. So I took those three words that are on the cards and I showed how they are connected. You're going to do two different ones, okay? That's on page 
34. And yes, I know we have not done page 33 yet, but we will later today in the video. Okay. Right, back to my screen. Right to where we were. Read the focusing question to yourself, and then we'll read it together. How does weather impact leaves in fall? You have so much knowledge now that will help you to be able to answer this question and you'll be able to share your learning on the focusing question task. At this time, pause to grab assessment 23, the focusing question task three, and then just hit play when you're ready to continue. Okay, so we are, you do not have a physical copy of this, but you do have a copy, a digital copy that has already been uploaded into your Google Classroom. Let's read the directions together. Write an informative paragraph with change to answer the focusing question. How does weather impact leaves in fall? Let's take a look to see what we need to include in the paragraph response. We need to include a topic statement, at least three sentences with evidence, the words first, then, and finally, and a conclusion. During this lesson, you will only be working on step one. In step one, you'll be recording evidence in the evidence organizer. As you record your evidence, you'll be sure to include the key terms or the important words from our text. As you gather evidence in the evidence organizer, keep the big question in mind. How does weather impact leaves in fall? Let me show you how I gathered evidence as I read pages 9 through 11. Just a few weeks ago, all the leaves were green. Back in the spring, the tiny new leaves uncurled from their buds. The green color in the leaves helps them to absorb or hold sunlight. That's important to remember. I need to add that to my evidence organizer. Chlorophyll gives the leaves their green coloring. Chlorophyll is a natural coloring called a pigment. It's important to remember that chlorophyll is what makes the leaves green when there's lots of sunlight. I also need to jot that down in my evidence organizer. As I read page nine, I gathered two notes that I wanted to add to my evidence organizer. Chlorophyll is the green color in the leaves and chlorophyll absorbs the sunlight. I'm going to keep reading as I move on to page 11 to see if there's anything else that I can add to my evidence organizer. Leaves are very important to the tree. They make a kind of sugar that is the tree's food. Leaves need sunlight, water, and air to make this food. The leaves work to feed the tree all summer long. The sugar is used by all parts of the tree, the leaves, branches, trunk, and roots. The food or sugar helps the tree to grow. Extra sugar is stored in the leaves. When it's sunny and warm, leaves make sugar to feed the tree. I captured that in my evidence organizer in the first column. You have a choice here. You can pause the video here 
to copy my notes from the first column into your first column, or if you'd like to, you can read pages 9 through 11 on your own and jot your own notes into the first column. Pause now to work and then just hit play when you're ready to continue. Okay, what you are going to do now is you are going to open up your journal to page 33. Remember how I just told you that we were going to use page 33 today? We are going to use page 33 and we're going to go ahead and start creating our evidence organizer using the details, the evidence that Miss Sabella has provided for you for the first column. And I'm going to show you what it should look like in your journal. And so again, you are on page 33, okay? And here's what your evidence order organizer is going to look like, okay? You're going to put today's date, and it's going to say, evidence organizer for why do leaves change color? You need to write first, then, and finally, just like the chart that Ms. Sabella is using, except ours is in our journal, okay? And then you're going to copy down the evidence that she showed you for first, and then we're going to do then and finally together. Okay, so you can pause and do this right now, or you can wait until we finish both all three columns, and I'll have a picture uploaded for you so that you can copy it that way. Either way is fun. Get ready to add to the column in the middle. The column is titled, Then. As I read page 15, think about the weather. How is it having an impact on the leaves? Remember, you can pause my voice wherever you need to to jot down your note. You can also pause to scroll back on the timeline so you can listen again. Ready? Here we go. The tree begins to get ready for its winter rest. It needs very little food now, and the leaves stop their work. The life of the leaves is almost at an end. The tree no longer needs them. When the leaves die, they will fall from the tree. This will happen slowly over a number of weeks. As the leaves begin to separate from the tree, they get less water. Without water, the leaves cannot make new chlorophyll. The old chlorophyll begins to fade. The green color starts to disappear. Now get ready to add to the last column in your evidence organizer. Okay, before that, let's go back and do the then column. So we need to look at not only that page, we need to look at, we need to look at this page also, okay? So it says, in the fall, many things are changing. In many places, there is a change in the weather. There are changes in light and temperature. Inside the leaves, there will be many changes too. All of these changes bring about the beautiful colors of fall. In the fall, there are fewer hours of sunlight each day. The change in light tells the tree to get ready for winter. Winter is a time of rest for the tree. When winter comes, the tree will have to survive with less water and sunlight. So I heard something really important on that page that we should put in our then column is that there's less sunlight. There's less hours of sunlight each day in the fall. So I need to put that. I'm going to make a little bullet. Remember, bullets do not have to be in a complete sentence. OK. 
Okay, so there is less sunlight. And then what happens because there is less sunlight? What do the leaves not have enough of? They don't have enough water and they can't, don't make as much chlorophyll. So there is less water and the leaves have less chlorophyll. Okay, so there we've got two pieces of information so far. And when there's less chlorophyll, what is happening to the coloring of the leaf? What happens to the green color? It starts to what? It starts to disappear. And because there's not much for the leaf to do anymore, what is it doing? It's separating from the trees. Okay, so we have first chlorophyll is the green color in the leaves. Chlorophyll absorbs the sunlight. Leaves make sugar to feed the tree. Then there is less sunlight. There is less water and the leaves have less chlorophyll. The green color is disappearing. Leaves separate from the trees. So now we're gonna listen to page 16 so we can fill out the finally column. Remember, as I'm reading, you can pause. You can also scroll back on the timeline to listen to something again. Ready? Here we go. Now, other colors can be seen in the leaves. Other pigments have been in the leaves all along, but they were hidden by the dark green of the chlorophyll. Once the green color fades, the yellow and orange pigments can be seen. These pigments give color to the leaves of birches, poplars, and elms. Some foods like bananas and carrots get their natural yellow and orange coloring from these same pigments. They also give color to some flowers. Maybe you can think of some. Okay, so if I'm looking at this page, there's one really big thing that sticks out in my, to my mind, is that it says other colors can be seen in the leaves. And what are the other pigments that we see in the leaves in the fall? We can see red and orange and yellow and brown and even some purple. So we've got red, yellow, orange, brown, and purple. Okay, so on your finally section, we wrote other pigments appear, red, yellow, orange, brown, and purple. So our whole chart, we just filled our full chart out together. Congratulations, guys. You are going to copy this down tonight in your journal. Right, so we are almost finished with our video with Ms. Sabella. We're going to finish that up. Take time now to pause or to scroll back and pause so you can add to the final column in your evidence organizer. Once your organizer is complete, just hit play to continue our lesson. How do I use the conclusion in my informative paragraph? 
as we get closer to writing an informative paragraph, let's remember that every informative paragraph has a topic statement, evidence that supports the topic, and a conclusion that restates the topic statement. Here's a chance for you to plan and to practice your paragraph out loud before you put it down in writing. As you practice your paragraph out loud, use your evidence organizer as a guide. Remember, you have the three sequencing words at the top, first, then, and finally, and your evidence is right there in your organizer. Be sure to come up with a topic statement as you practice, share your evidence, and then provide a conclusion that reminds the reader what your paragraph would be about. Try to record your voice as you practice. That way you can listen back to your paragraph to see what you'd like to improve. Talk to your classroom teacher about recording options for your classroom. Pause here to plan and practice, and then when you're ready to wrap up our video lesson, just hit play. Okay, so what you're going to do after you write the chart on page 33 is you are going to choose your evidence that you want to use in your question and your focusing question to ask, okay? So if I look at the evidence. The question is, first of all, let me read you the question because remember we always have to answer the question. The question is, how does weather impact leaves in the fall? So how does the change of weather affect leaves? How does it make the leaves change? Well, I'm looking at my evidence organizer. And first of all, I need to come up with the topic statement. Remember, the topic statement is something that introduces what I'm going to talk about. And I'm going to talk about how the weather impacts the leaves in the fall. So my topic statement could be something like, the change of weather in the fall impacts the leaves by changing their color. Okay, that means that I'm going to talk about how the weather changes make the leaves change color. Okay, so I would say, first, leaves are green because of the chlorophyll. Then, there's less sunlight, and the green, the chlorophyll is disappearing, and so is the green color. Finally, other pigments appear in the leaves. The reds and the yellows and the oranges and browns and purples shine through the chlorophyll. So there's my topic statement, three pieces of evidence. And then I can end it all up with saying, the changes in the weather impacted the color of the leaves. And that's just my example, okay? But you're going to do your evidence organizer, okay? You're going to pick which pieces of evidence you want to use. Yellow, blue, yellow. You can pick one or more. You can pick two or three if you want, if you want to use them all together. If you feel like just saying chlorophyll is the green color in the leaves, if you don't feel like that's enough of an exclamation, explanation, you can use two or three. That is wonderful. I would love that. So you're going to pick evidence from first in yellow, from then in blue, and from finally in yellow, okay? And then I want you to practice saying it. We're not writing it today. I just want you to practice telling someone. You're gonna make sure you do your topic statement. The changes in weather affect the leaves in the fall. Then tell me how, okay? So we're just practicing it out loud today. And if you wanna practice it out loud on the Class Dojo, you can do that, okay? Just let me know if it's a practice or if you're actually turning it in. All right, so we are almost done. Words are pretty powerful, and so are you. I will see you again very soon.
Okay, so that ended quickly. <laughs> okay, so you have two assignments tonight, okay? You are going to copy down your evidence organizer on page 33. Choose your evidence for your writing, all right? Verbally out loud, talk through how you're going to answer the question with your partner. And then on page 34, you're going to choose three, two to three words twice and tell how they are connected from that activity sheet. Okay. So that is your work for today. You're going to make sure that you take pictures of your work and post it for me so that I can see it. All right. Thank you so much, guys. Remember that fall break is coming up, which means that you are running out of time to get your work finished. Okay. You have got to do a lot of work to get done. There's a lot of question sets that haven't been worked on. There's a lot of stuff that's being turned in incomplete. If you don't do it, I'm not giving you a grade. You'll just get a zero. And that will make me very sad, but I don't give grades out free. Guys, you got to earn them, okay? And a lot of vocabulary pictures have not been turned in. A lot of work is still incomplete. So please go through each week. Make sure that you have submitted all of your work. If I have returned it to you, some of it is just returned just so that you can see it. But sometimes I've written on there that said, this is blank. This has not been completed. You need to complete this activity. Check to make sure that there's not a comment on there. Okay, if you need to return something, you can return it to get a better grade. You're not, you don't have to keep that zero. You do the work and submit it back to me and I'll regrade it. Okay, you've only got a few days left until fall break. All right, I'll see you guys later. Have a great afternoon.